I'm like, hey, what's your favorite television station? I'm ready. I'm all like, Disney? Honestly, any station is better than Disney. Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney's for little girls. I'm all like, Disney? Oh, Cartoon Network's pretty good. Absolutely. I I know everybody is really confused as to what's just transpired, why I'm being arrested, and why I've turned into internet enemy number one. Ladies, gentlemen, and my lovely MBs, I have committed the internet sin of being a consumer of Disney products over the age of 18. Yes, I know. I am a dastardly, dastardly Disney adult. Anyways, so in this past year, I've come to find out how much I really love Disney. And I've realized how much my life has kind of centered around Disney and just its many different products of media and how that's kind of affected me as a person overall. And I think I kind of have not a unique experience because it's not unique at all, but people 10 years older than me have this unique era of Disney where they were growing up in the Renaissance era of Disney when these movies were first coming out, which was happening between the 80s and the 90s. When I was growing up, the Renaissance era of Disney was a uh, long, long, I shouldn't say long gone, but it was on its way out the door. Like the films in the Renaissance era, I would only see them in school and they would be on like VH VHS tapes and stuff like that. But the era of Disney that I grew up in was when they were booming, not with their animated films, but with the Disney Channel. And I know everybody kind of has this sort of, oh, the best era of music is the one that I grew up with, or the best era of TV shows is the one I grew up with. And not to be one of those people, because I have factual evidence that I grew up in the best era of Disney Channel. <laughs> but the early 2000s, the late 90s, early 2000s era of Disney Channel was so Go to no disrespect to any other era that came before it or after it. I'm just saying I was looking up I was looking at this documentary of somebody talking about the history of Disney and Disney Channel and they're talking about how the early 2000s the era that I grew up with Disney Channel that was their largest era ever they became the biggest either the biggest kids network or the biggest network on television for a few years consistently in that early 2000s era and i was just all like i was a part of that and i was thinking back and i was just all like that played such an integral role in my development as a child i absolutely love musicals I love animated films, I love romances, I love stuff like that, and I I trace so much of that back to Disney Channel and DCOMs and Disney animated films I was watching at the time. Disney played such an integral role in my musical choice, which is such an odd thing to say, but think about it for a second. If you grew up early 2000s Disney, not only did we have High School Musical, we had the Cheetah Girls. We had Miley Cyrus, you man. Selena Gomez, Hilary Duff. Lads, Disney were pumping out stars. You know, think about it for a second. Cartoon Network didn't have people because it was just cartoons. They didn't have live action people until 2011, but they stopped that very quickly. Nickelodeon tried to really pump out stars, but all the big, like, heavy hitting people all came from Disney. I already, na already named you a roster. Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus, Hannah Mont Those are the same people. Hilary Duff. The only person I can think of from Nickelodeon that kind of, you know, did numbers is Ariana Grande. I, that's the only person I can think of personally. The Jonas Brothers! Oh my god! I was sitting at home, watching TV all alone. 
So tired of the routines, the day goes on and on. So I pick up the phone, call everyone I know. I said it's gonna be a party, get the music, here we go. Yeah! Lord have mercy, I hope I cut that out of the video. Anyways, I'm gonna be honest. Just having the Jonas Brothers in that lineup is already goaded. We grew up with so many stars you love. And it's like, they weren't just, because now when I think of Disney Channel, I can't even think of, I can't think of one person who's just a superstar that comes from Disney. The only person I can think of is maybe Olivia Rodrigo. To be fair, I don't keep up with Disney Channel anymore, so it's not like I would know anybody. But they were just producing superstar after superstar after superstar and they weren't just simply actors they were literally cultural icons you love i remember i don't look up to nobody nowadays but i remember back when i was younger i was all like hannah miley cyrus is so cool oh my god i, I yo i used to have the biggest crush on selena gomez you love <laughs> I have so many fun memories of Camp Rock, oh my, Demi Lovato, oh my god! Whenever I, I hear people talk about Disney adults, I always feel like every, every single Disney adult that I think of usually came from that 90s era of the Disney renaissance. But I feel like they're, I don't know, I don't want to say there's going to be a resurgence or something. I, I really enjoy how my Disney era came from the Disney Channel and just and just it was a time you know it was just I can't even explain it you just simply had to be there you, Disney was so magical that that's the only thing I can think of that's the feeling that I have whenever I think of Disney right now and I've gone back and earlier this year I started watching a bunch of Disney films from the Renaissance era specifically the fairy tale princess stories. That was something that I missed out on in my childhood because I purposely chose not to watch those films because I thought they would uh, turn me gay, which, uh, you know, 21 years later, I can assure you that plan did not work out too well. Sorry, Jesus. But watching those films, yeah, my favorite film has to be Beauty and the Beast, hands down. I don't like re-watching films. I don't like redoing anything particular, really, but I have watched Beauty and the Beast two times in a row this year, and I'm planning to, I actually plan to watch it tonight, but I decided to record this video because that film, the Disney princess films are so magical, man. Optimism is such a huge thing in, in Disney. That's that's when I think of Disney, I think optimism. I feel like everything in this world is just so uh, here here I go on my everything in the world is so bad inter I'm sorry. I this is just I'm having a moment here. I feel like everything in the world is just so uh we're going to die this and the third. The world is turning to garbage. Everybody sucks. The world is ending. Da da da. But when I turn on a Disney film, man, just everything, every every bit of sadness, every sort of pain, it just it just washes away you lot. And I just Beauty and the Beast is that one film that I can just watch over and over and over again and just it's magical, that's all I can say, really. It's just magical. Like, and it's so weird, you know, people talk about how Disney owns everything and Disney has a hand in everything and it's really true honestly it's so weird I shied away from watching Disney or watching TV shows in 2012 I can tell you the exact date that I stopped watching television actually give me a second it was what the hell it was May 6 2011 you want to know how I know because that was the last episode of the Sweet Life on Deck. And that joint absolutely wrecked me. Listen, as a kid watching TV, to have a TV show that has a definitive end is already such such a blessing to have. To have a TV show that you can 
actually end yourself. It didn't get canceled. It didn't get taken off of air like that. Dylan and Cole Sprouts, the Sprouts boys, we was chilling with them since since 2008. 9, 10, 11, wait, 8, oh, excuse me, 2005, 5, 6 years, I know, for some reason I feel like it should be, it should have been longer, but 6 years, we saw, we saw the, we grew up with them, we aged with them, in that last episode where they went off to college, Bro, the music. I still remember the music a lot. It hurt me so bad to see that last episode. I legitimately stopped watching TV. That's how much that last episode hurt me. But what's crazy is that I transitioned from not watching television anymore to playing mostly video games and watching anime. You want to know what game I picked up like two years after I stopped watching Disney and television? Ow, hold on, hold on. Cause it, cause this is hilarious. A little video game about three incredible stories, one unforgettable adventure. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix released first time in North America. Rechain of Me Oh, who who is that on the? Oh my God, is that Donald and Goofy? This game right here, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix, started it all. Without this game, I would not be here. My cousin used to have the original Kingdom Hearts game and back on the PlayStation 2. And whenever I went over his house, he would always have the disc to the game, just a loose disc. And I always wanted to play it because I always remembered seeing Donald and Goofy on the box art. And I was all like, what is this game? I really want to play it. but. I don't know what type of disc he had for the game. It must have been some sort of demo disc or a trailer because it was never the actual game. But every time I went to his house, I always wanted to play it. And I never got the opportunity till I picked up this game right here. And I absolutely blasted through this whole entire series. And from Kingdom Hearts, I actually went on to play Final Fantasy. And from Final Fantasy, I went on to play Persona, which is a different video game that absolutely changed my life for the better. And it literally all stemmed from this one game right here. And you know what's actually so crazy about the fact that Disney's involvement in Kingdom Hearts is the reason why I wanted to play it so badly which led to me finding other video games that just impacted my life in such a huge way. My favorite game of all time. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I wanna make a dedicated video on that someday. It was another situation where I was at my cousin's house and he had this game on the Wii and I heard music from Miley Cyrus. Is that? Is that Hannah Montana? And he goes, yeah, it's Hannah Montana. They got Jesse McCartney in this game. They have a bunch of Disney people. I was all like, no way. I, I, I begged my dad to get me this game. And it is the one game that I need, to, I need to make a video on that. I need to make a video on that game someday. That game is my favorite game of all damn time. But it's so mad that my favorite games literally have so much influence from Disney itself. And I'm just all like, wow, the mouse literally has its hands on everything. So for me, this earlier this year, I decided to go back and watch a bunch of Disney princess films that I missed out on when I was younger. And one thing that I feel like is so dope about Disney, well, I shouldn't say about Disney, but about the Renaissance era of Disney films, or maybe just animation in general, is that I really need to be, I really need to stop feeling so scared to talk about this on this channel. Queer coding. 
the characters within within Disney. I was I was I was because I was watching the films earlier this year and I was wondering how come a, a certain batch of characters I really love or I really feel drawn to and then I learned that they were queer artists or like character designers on the Disney team making these films obviously they couldn't make the sexualities or stuff like that of these characters known because there were laws in place that were against doing that. But I think about that, not even the Disney films, even the DCOMs, like High School Musical, I just saw like, wow, they, they, they were trying to put us on screen even when it was illegal. And looking at it now and as a, an adult, it was still kind of struggling with accepting identities. I was all like, fuck. Even when they weren't allowed to put us on screen, they're all like, we gotta do a little something for the gays. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and I've been looking at a bunch of videos from like people talking about this. And I was just all like, I learned a new word, you lot. I learned a new word. Okay. So I learned this new word and it's called camp. And oh, my God, when I say you lot, I have been trying to understand what my personality was like for the past 21 years. People would tell me, oh, why do you act so weird? Why do you act so cringe? You act white. You act like this. You act like an anime character. You act like a character out of a book. I'm all like... Bitch, I'm just campy. <laughs> I don't even know if I use that word correctly in that instance, but I'm still gonna act like I know what I'm saying. Hello, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I don't even know how to explain the word, honestly, because I'm, I'm anytime I try to look up gay camp, it comes up with like, gay conversion therapy type things. I'm all like, huh, been there, done that, doesn't work, trust me. But I was watching a video and he was all like, camp is something like just so absurd. So just takes itself seriously that it's so wacky and it's just eccentric. And I was just, I was, I was watching the video. I was just, that's me. What the hell? I had no clue. This whole time, I feel like I have unlocked this like queer identity that I just didn't know about because I've been trying to understand why my personality is just so deranged. I'm just all like, this is a part of my people. <laughs> This is, this is me, this is real, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now. Slip the light, my homie. I just see Disney as this just band of escapism and just wonder. I've watched a couple films now and and, and the, fa the favorite ones that I watched this year is is Turning Red and Absolutely Beauty and the Beast. Those two films to No, my favorite Turning Red, Beauty and the Beast, Meet the Robinsons and I, I really want to go through so much more of the Disney Disney not even Disney films, DCOMs as well and just the whole entire Disney catalog cuz I just I feel like I kind of gatekept my gatekept myself from enjoying this so much as a child. I mean, one for my own uh, identity issues, and then also as well just outside pushback. <laughs> I remember. Oh my god, I was. And you know, it's crazy. It kind of sucks that the video kind of proved this right. But you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm an adult now and it doesn't matter. Who cares what anybody likes? But I remember the video was talking about how channels were specifically made for certain demographics of people. And Nickel Nickelodeon was, I forget who Nickelodeon was primarily targeted towards, but I know Cartoon Network was targeted towards boys. And then they said Disney Channel was targeted towards 
girls. And the reason why <laughs> I, I'm the reason why I'm just all like shit is because I remember. Bitch, I remember growing up in the early 2000s, right? I remember the straight homies. Well, uh, the straight homies and me <laughs> were together and we're all like, hey, what's your favorite television station? Bitch, I'm ready. I'm all like, Disney? Honestly, any station is better than Disney. Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney's for little girls. I'm all like, Disney? Cartoon Network's pretty good, absolutely. I love Cartoon Network. Bitch. I was up in there, motherfucker, watching Even Stevens. Sweet Life with Zack and Cody. Living Life with Derek. Cause it's fair, fair, fair in the future. Give me anything guys is a mess as it can. My babysitter's a vampire. She's a girl next, girl next. Nice but naughty, your heart that's pure. She's a girl next door. She's with me. So I'm like, don't play with me. <sighs> Man, they, they was hating on my baby. They was hating on my babysitter's a vampire. Nigga, what? They was hating on Hannah Montana. Nigga, what? They was hating on Camp Rock. Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie McGuire. How do you hate Kim Possible? I'm like, bro, they had me tripping, son. But I'm glad I'm I'm going back, and I'm reliving. I'm reliving what I missed out on, and I'm glad I, I'm I'm looking at it from an adult lens because I don't think I really would have appreciated it as a child. Like there are so many, I shouldn't say hidden messages. But there are so many messages that I would not have understood and I definitely would not have appreciated had I watched these films when I was younger. Things that come to my mind right now are, are the story of Mulan or the story of The Little Mermaid. I, absolutely beautiful. Turning Red was such a phenomenal film and I feel like that, that film was such... It's beautiful, but it's only beautiful to me because personally I know what it's like. Actually, you know what, let me not. I just... It, it doesn't matter. It's a film that touched upon something that is just never told, that is just never told in Western media or or American media. And it was all like, yeah, this is this is exactly what it's like to have like immigrant relatives. Like I've never seen that before in anything. In the first, I was watching, I was like, oh my God, I needed this. Like I'm not Asian, obviously. I was like, but this is such a foreigner relative story. It's it's a whole thing. I'd love to get into it. Actually, no, I don't, because I'm trying to end this video as quickly as possible. But I love Disney, man. I really do. I really do. Oh my god, I really do. I'm gonna I'm I'm about to watch Beauty and the Beast after this. I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to rewatch that film for the third time. But you know, public enemy number one. I'm Justice, and I. Disney.